Good morning everyone and welcome back to my allotment diaries. I'm here in my little courtyard vegetable garden. It rained, which was just like the happiest moment of I think every gardener's um, life. <laughs> it was certainly the happiest part of my year so far because everything got watered and obviously rainwater is so good for our plants and everything's just sort of been so dried out. It doesn't seem to matter how often you kind of water it, the watering can or something, it just rain always seems to do a better job i mean it would wouldn't it it's completely natural look at my little vegetable garden now look how it's thrived i don't really have a comparison to show you before and after but i can just let you know that this looks so much healthier now the leaves are so much more vibrant and green and happy and look at my little pumpkin that has been doing nothing for ages and all of a sudden is shooting up I've even got look, some little flowers appearing on him which is amazing but I do need to figure out a little bit more of a structure across the fence today and that is my main job. I wasn't actually sure if I would get a pumpkin out here at all because um, it's just like I said it's just been stagnant a bit like the ones at my allotment plot um, but all of a sudden he shot up when we got some rain which is amazing so fingers crossed he keeps going. Um, my tomatoes out here are doing really good as well. All going lovely and red which is amazing and then these great big knobbly ones I'm not sure what they're called but on this plant here they are starting to go red which is pretty exciting and they look pretty healthy and then that is the healthiest tomato plant I have and he's got some whoppers on him I have a little cucumber in here I can see a little snail track on him actually that's a bit annoying but again he started to uh, to grow a little bit now and he's got a flower on him as well um, and he's actually beginning to sort of move a little bit because he again was sort of that big for a long time and he's sort of getting going I think they all just needed a bit of a bit of rain um, and then over here this is my fennel I've never grown fennel before it's flowered and I, I, I don't know if that's okay or not I think he's all right because um, I know the fennel is sort of here, isn't he? Like, this is the bit that you eat down here. He's not growing very big there, but he looks healthy, doesn't he? This one looks all right too. The herbs that you saw me plant in these little pots here have been alive. I've been watering these every day. They've done okay. And I think these flowers that I kept, I think they're going to come back to life. I can feel it. I can feel it. But these are doing absolutely amazing. And then down here, I've got my um, beetroot, which is doing really good. That's the same. That's just a caterpillar haven at the moment. Um, and then I think you saw me take the leaves off of this courgette plant and look how vibrant it is now. How beautiful. And we've even got a little baby courgette growing on him again. So sometimes just getting rid of the bad leaves, which I might do again today, actually, um, just helps revitalize the plant a little bit and gets it going again. But all in all, my vegetable plants out here are doing pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them right now. Right, not the prettiest position I could have stuffed myself in, but there we go. I'm going to give my plants a little tomato feed, and this is going to include my pumpkin plant as well. I think tomato feed is a really great thing to feed later on in the season when um, plants are getting flowers and starting getting fruit on it. So my tomatoes, my pumpkin, I'm going to feed with some tomato feed. Hopefully that just revitalised them a little bit. It did last time actually, it really helped them just to, I don't know, they just sort of like got going a little bit more and looked a bit healthier so I'm just going to whack it in. I really don't mind this stuff as well because it doesn't smell anywhere near as bad as seaweed feed does so I'm sort of alright with it. I'll stick a bit more in. Who doesn't do that? Don't lie to me. This is our great big um, handmade planter at the back of the garden. We made it out of some um, fence panel things that go at the bottom of a fence. I can't remember what they're called. Um, gravel boards, I think. And then around the top, we've got some decking. 
just a couple of cheap decking boards that we got and we just made this we threw it together it's our biggest planter in the garden and I've recently planted it up with some plants I got from the garden center because it was just looking a bit sad Unfortunately I sort of planted it up and then we had all that kind of heat wave come and a lot of it kind of suffered and I watered it as much as I physically could but I think the heat wave was so humid and sticky they just dried everything out so quickly and these plants were so new they probably needed like five gallons of water a day or something which is so annoying but you probably see the bees are really enjoying these um, which are salvias and I just got a few of these and put those in they've done quite well in the heat um, I got a couple of dahlias which are already grown uh, just because I just wanted to whack them in and uh, some of them have like shriveled up and died that's the heat that's done that that's not me um, but some of them are okay they look all right this plant's died don't know what that was some kind of shrub this one is okay it's a marigold that looks all right and then this cosmos unfortunately it's just wilting away before me and I just don't know why it's doing that because it's so lovely it's got these little flower buds on it I don't really understand why it's dying and then just to show you the contrast so this is this cosmos which I whacked in I brought him like as a plant by the way not as like a seed or anything and then over here I put this lovely cosmos exactly the same one um, in a pot and he's done really well and well and he looks really happy um, and really like, I don't know, like structured, do you know what I mean? Like he's not going to fall down. It's just such a shame that he's not, he's done really well and he's sort of not. And you can probably also see how sort of messy my garden is because it's just been so hot. My excuse has just been, it's, been, it's just been so hot that I've just not managed to get out here and pick things up. I couldn't even bend down to do anything. It was just, I was just going to faint. Um, and I've got a mystery sunflower that's popped up. Have you got any mystery plants in your garden that popped up this year? I've got loads of borage at the allotment plot, which has just popped up like crazy. And then I've got this mystery little sunflower. Don't know where he came from, but here he is. Poised and ready to open, I think. Um, I'm really quite tall and I actually had no idea he was there and because of the heat wave I haven't weeded very much so that's why he survived isn't he lovely <laughs> and then look I've got two two over there as well. well look another mystery plant I've got a nasturtium sort of randomly growing in this little corner here he's so beautiful isn't he love him don't know where he's come from it's just the mystery of gardening sometimes guys isn't it things just pop up I'm going to steal that there for the um, pumpkin because the, the um, clematis on it just completely died and crisped up in the heat wave. taking it down really tentatively because I'm worried there's a big spider on it and I'm going to freak out. <laughs> Yes, unfortunately I had this in a pot and because it's been in a pot for so long I sort of forgot it was in a pot. Do you know what I mean? I just sort of assumed it was self-sufficient and then in the heat wave I didn't water it obviously and uh, it just sort of died so that needs to come out really now. I think the whole thing's going to be the roots cut it back I think. I'll have to try something else in there. Right so we're back to that usual slot of DIY fix it with Emma. Um, who has absolutely no idea what she's doing. But I've got these old little screws and I just thought I could just balance it on the screws. So let's do that. I always say so let's do that because I'm not going to change my mind do you know what I mean you're not here to tell me so we're just going to fail together and you're going to have to endure watching it and that's it <laughs> I don't seem confident did I? <laughs> convinced it will work Have some faith. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. God, it's 
something I've done that's actually worked. <laughs> Should start a DIY channel. DIY with Emma. Look at that. Let's go get the other one in now. But This is working. Mind you, it doesn't say much for the uh, fence if I'm able just to screw it in with a little screwdriver. It's probably quite rotten, that fence, but the point is it's still standing. And I can put my little trellis up now. It's all right now. Yeah. Yeah. Trellis on the fence, done, sorted. Yes. like the riffraff and you've got your own trellis now mate yeah there you go I like it <laughs> good give me some pumpkins <laughs> this is exactly what I envisioned when I thought about having the pumpkin out here I envisioned having it sort of go all up here over the fence that's really nice that is I really hope that works I really hope he grows and when I'm tying him in I'm not sort of tying him too tightly to it I'm kind of guiding him so that's quite loose and you see these little spindles, they'll sort of hopefully start to wrap around and cling on by themselves so that he understands how to cling on and then he'll just do it himself, you see. So I'm just guiding him, I'm just guiding him over from his little pot. That should work really nicely if it works and it doesn't fall down. But why would it? It's been put up by an expert. So I'm really happy with that. I'm excited now to see my little pumpkin grow out here. How lovely. I love how excited I get by such silly things in the garden. I just get so overexcited. But that is part of the beauty of gardening, is that the small things just bring you so much joy. Um, yeah, everything's going really well. I would just sit in the back of the garden, get a bit of peace and quiet with a cup of tea and um, just before it pours down with rain again, which I'm actually quite excited about. I'm sort of sitting here like it's some kind of an event. I'm like I'm waiting for the first drops to hit. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit disheartened with my allotment now and it's funny because the last video I did was all about talking about how you define success in your allotment plot and how you, you know, portray your version of success and make sure it's a good version and, you know, don't compare yourself to other people. But this is like the second year running where I've been disheartened with my allotment plot and felt like I've, it's just got away from me again. Everything that I wanted to grow died and then I regrew it again and then half of that didn't grow and then beds that were supposed to be full of life you know never materialized or didn't germinate or i just feel like it's deja vu all over again and i can't understand why in the first year that i had my allotment plot everything just grew and everything felt so much easier and yet i didn't have half the amount of soil there and like you know all of the help that i've got all the tools and everything that i've got now i didn't have any of that and yet it did so blooming well I've honestly been like so down about it that yesterday I actually seriously considered giving my allotment plot up and just having a little patch in the garden here, just a little vegetable patch and that's it. But I love my allotment plot and I don't want to have to give it up. I just wish that in my first year nothing had grown. <laughs> I think I feel like a gambler you know they say like the worst thing that can happen to a gambler is that they actually win because then they know that it can happen and they just they'll never it's like I'm, I'm gonna be constantly chasing this elusive allotment plot now for the rest of my life all because the first year everything grew I'm just gonna be like so determined to get that again and I just want that hit and I just want that magical moment of oh my god I grew all this and I just can't seem to grab it anymore. I don't know where it's gone. Oh, God's sakes.
Anyway, I wanted to share with you because I wonder if anybody else out there has ever felt like this too. Having an allotment plot is a massive commitment, isn't it? It's such a big commitment to make and I don't think you really appreciate that until you've got it and then you're like, oh my gosh, I have to keep up with this piece of land. Um, and I never realised like what a massive kind of job it would be and I love it and it's become my life, it's become my career, I write for gardening magazines now so you know I absolutely love everything to do with gardening but I'd, I'd like, have you ever felt that way about your plot and just been like you know what maybe I should just give it up, maybe I should just let it go um, and try growing a different way, I, I don't know, help me. <laughs> I just want to know that I'm not the only one thinking that sometimes and that and that like other people kind of get that feeling of like comparison and I'm not doing good enough and stuff so do let me know in the comments um, if you've ever felt that way about your allotment plot before because it will really help <laughs> me to feel better <laughs> if you enjoyed this little rambly vlog today if you did subscribe to my youtube channel I'll be back on Friday showing you all the things I'm, pr I'm planting right now for the autumn winter so that's very exciting isn't it because we are now thinking about autumn winter planting and yeah I'll be showing you what I'm going to be sowing so I'll see you on Friday have a lovely gardening week bye